it's because of our food story that's operating in the background. So what is this food story? Well, frankly, my food story, as I say, was I'm too thin and protein is important. And I'm going to stuff my face at every chance I get and never be hungry because that was the most important thing to me. So it's all about belief systems and my emotions. What was really interesting, of course, was the things that really affected my food story. Really were being 17 years old in 1987, living in the San Fernando Valley. Does anyone know the San Fernando Valley? Woo, represent. <laughs> the San Fernando Valley in 1987, surrounded by a bunch of people my own age in high school when Jean-Claude Van Damme and Arnold Schwarzenegger are on the screens, and I'm looking at this frame with 40 pounds less. Five foot 10 and 120. Supermodel sexy. <laughs> Did I mention female supermodels are five foot 10 and 120? That doesn't matter. Growing up, I'm Jewish. I'm kind of awkward. People don't really, not in the cool crowd. All the pretty girls are getting dated by all the jocks and the guys that have the cool cars and, you know, are a little bit more buff than me. All of these things are influencing my individual food story because that's where our food story is from. Partially, it's from our own personal experience. Now, no one here has any issues like that at all, right? <laughs> but there's a bigger picture. And it's the one that I think is really more important, and that is our culture. We have so many influences, as many people have talked about here today, within our culture. So mine, of course, was being raised in the 80s in the San Fernando Valley, middle class, being buff was everything. So how I ate was all relative to wanting to change the way my body looked. But then again, other people were saying, fat's bad. Then we started to get on the, the anti-fat craze in the 80s. So then I was bouncing around with, well, now wait, should I be eating fat? Should I not be eating fat? And then I started to learn about organic and local and seasonal and sustainable. And I started thinking, wait a minute, what am I doing there? And am I getting the right protein sources from the right sources? And okay, this is protein powder, but it's not from way, it's not from uh, RBGH free cows. And, and I'm, you know, McDonald's is saying, you deserve a break today. And then Special K is telling me that, what will I win when I lose? And I'm like, wow. And Doctors and the fitness industry and the beauty industry and all, right, all of these sources are telling us how it should be, how our food story should read and how we should live into our food story. To say the least, many, most Americans are not going to be free of some kind of hang up around food. You can see this, right? We all live in the United States. If you grew up in the United States, you're dealing with this. You have a food story, whether you know it or not, and it's probably got parts of it that you don't like. So we want to make a change. We want to change how we're eating, whether it's healthier, sustainable, it's environmental, whatever the case may be, most of us want to make the change, but we're not. So again, our food story is getting in the way of our action steps. I've never come across anyone that I've worked with who isn't intelligent and isn't hardworking and dedicated and doesn't want to change. They want to change. And while they have the information, they're not stepping into it. So I knew I was overeating. I was tired of being stuffed all the time. But I had to get that protein in, and I was wasting food because I was seeing food on the plate, and it was getting thrown away, even though I was completely stuffed. I still tried to eat it, but then if I threw it away, I felt really bad. Because as I say, I was getting involved in environmental stuff too, so I was realizing I'm eating all this food, but then I'm throwing it away, and should I be eating animal protein because it's bad for the environment? All of this stuff was holding me back from actually realizing, why don't I want to do this anymore, and how am I going to change? So we have to become aware do you have a food story? Once you become aware of your food story, mine was, okay, this is why I'm doing it. There's a 14-year-old boy in me who still thinks he wants to be buff and get the pretty girl, so I better keep on eating all this protein. Of course, I was happily married at the time, and I had this body, which I was actually pretty okay with, but that wasn't what I was paying attention to. So once I looked at it and sort of analyzed it, I realized, okay, that's my story. There's a 14-year-old boy in me with his food story that says this is how it should be. Each protein with every meal and never walk away from the table hungry, right? So what, that was my story. And I realized I don't want to live like that anymore. I want to enjoy food. I want to be able to make choices that maybe are more environmentally sustainable and not eat as much meat or not put as much on my plate, not take as much food in the first place, right? And just not waste any then. 
So what I found was then I was able to step into action. And this is what I've seen with clients, is once they've identified their food story and looked at it a little bit and come to a sort of accepting place of, okay, this is my story, I gotta deal with it. It doesn't mean they're stuck with it. It actually means they're okay with it the way it is, but now they can step into change. And that's the key. Once you're aware and you have some insight into it, you can actually make decisions. Use the information that you have, take the motivation that you actually have to make changes, and go into the action steps. So. That's what it's about to me. It's about rewriting our food story from the inside out, not focusing on sort of that top-down approach that I was trying to do, which was, you gotta eat this way, must, 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 must. A lot of people try to implement it from the top down. But when we check in from the inside out, I realized, yeah, I'd rather enjoy what I'm eating. I'd rather leave food on my plate if I had to and say no to things like that. So. I encourage you guys, I encourage everyone, whether it's to choose for sustainability or for weight loss or for health, that if you find yourself stuck and you're not able to make the change that you want around food, ask yourself, what's my food story? What is my food story telling me? I look forward to your questions and then we can go to lunch and actually think about our food story while we're eating. <laughs>